the future of music. 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 The future of music podcast. Hey there, once again, welcome back to the Future of Music podcast, where we show you how to survive and thrive in the future of music. I am Ryan Withrow. I am the highly underdressed uh, Ryan Withrow today, I'm noticing at this point. I've got a hoodie and a hat. I didn't even care to do my hair. Speaking of not doing their hair, we have Jonathan Boyd as well on here as my trusted (laughs) co-host. How's it going, John? How are you? Going good, man. Today, we're going to be diving into some really cool stuff. There's so much crazy stuff coming out right now. So we're going to dive into some of the latest AI generation tools, uh, music generation tools that are just taking over. Instagram threads just came out. TikTok just announced music generation. It's just, Everybody's going at it. So all the socials are getting into the game. We're going to talk about all that stuff today. Perfect. Good, good. Yeah, yeah. That's a uh- I've already been like looking into it. I'm so much, I'm dropping my guitar picks. Uh, So that's good. Uh, But yeah, don't forget, subscribe, click the alert, do the thing. We already see y'all commenting uh, and interacting with us. So thanks for that, first of all. And thanks for those of you who are subscribed and following. We appreciate you. But if you're not, I'm holding you accountable and you need to make sure that you do it. So make sure you do it. Otherwise, we starve. I think is what it's called. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Not really, but kind of. Anyway, let's talk about this AI music generation stuff. Let's do it. (laughs) So uh, obviously, I think we've talked every episode a little bit about the AI music generation world and happenings, and it never stops. Things are constantly coming out. Things are constantly evolving and changing so much that I think we could do an episode every hour and we'd have Mm -hmm. new stuff to focus on. Uh, true. But a few of the things that I've, I've noticed in the tech world, so to speak, and we're specifically thinking about musicians and or artists or creators or producers, uh, first and foremost, man, I, I was just talking to you about this one because I don't even know if you're aware. Instagram is coming out mm-hmm. with this threads thing now, all right, which probably one of the better names for all the apps that we're going to go over today and and uh, all of the tools that we're going to use. Still not the best. I mean, it's not very fun and exciting, but it's threads. And it's essentially the the alternate to Twitter, right? It's the non-Elon Musk Twitter is basically what everybody's referring to this as with Instagram threads. Same concepts, same everything. But instead, what's happening here is you're linking your Instagram profile. So what does this mean for musicians and artists that I'm seeing on the platform? As soon as you sign up for threads, you instantly have access to all of your followers that you've already created as a creator or a musician or a producer. So you're able to start growing your profile on threads instantly. And everybody's starting to think that it's going to be the next thing. It's going to be the next TikTok. I mean, in seven hours, they got 10 million users. It's the quickest growth that a platform has seen. And I feel like there's two layers to that. One, it's cool and it's new. I get it. But also, is that just going to continue regardless of type of app as we start to build more and more? Who knows if that's even a metric to focus on. But it's worth noting that a lot of musicians, a lot of producers, and a lot of software companies and tech companies in this space are moving to something like threads. And I know, John, you're you're a Twitter user, I I believe. I I never really got into the trend of, of the tweets and the Twittering. Uh, is that how you, is that what you refer to it as? But yeah, what, what are your thoughts on like a new revised Twitter focused mainly on followers for Mm -hmm. people like creators and artists? Yeah. So, I mean, creators and artists, we can separate those two have two main things to say about threads. Uh, one is from a marketing standpoint, they called it threads and threads. If you're a Twitter user instantly makes you think of Twitter, which is not what you want. If you're a different, you know, if you're a competitor, because Twitter the threads are called threads, Twitter threads. It's been around for years and years and years. So again, like every time I hear the word threads, I think of Twitter. I don't think of Instagram. It's not an Instagram thing. Mm. Um, So that's Mm. interesting. But also, you know, this is diving a little bit deeper. I think in terms of what I know about Twitter threads, Twitter threads, uh, Twitter has mostly been text and there are images and there are, now they have more video, et cetera. But in terms of an artist, in terms of somebody who's in the music space, for example, music is usually communicated through video and sound, right? It's not really a text thing. You don't really write about what song you're playing. You know what I mean? So that's kind of, I'm wondering how this threads thing is going to play out specifically for music artists. Because I, other than just being a different platform, just because I don't, I don't see how it really lends itself to being conducive to 
uh, the nature of music content. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's two things with that one. I saw a musician that I actually follow post, I think his first, uh, thread, uh, was him saying, uh, Hey, now all those Instagram artists that you follow, you found out they have personalities. What do you know? Uh, so really a lot of them are using it as a way to connect with them in a personal way, much yeah. more personal than like just content. Uh, but then also it's like bringing back the square videos, bro. It's, br it's bringing them back. Not that like full length vertical that just it's back to like the square, the memes, mm -hmm. like everything that uh, Twitter was known for back in the day, uh, for sure. But it'll be interesting. I think they're already surpassing or at least have at this point surpassed 30 million uh, mm -hmm. users. And it's only been out a day, not even a full day. So it's insane to see that a company could come out with something new and just boom, blow up out of nowhere. I mean, they beat all like Google Plus, I think, was the other one that went quickest to 10 million users. And that yeah. was like in days, a matter of days. Uh, this is hours, seven hours, 10 million users, uh, yeah. which is just wild to me, man. Wild. But that's good. And, you know, when we're talking about all this tech, all of these apps, uh, I actually have been digging into and starting to test out and play with a lot more of the AI music generation tools. Mm -hmm. So I know that you and I are familiar with a lot of those. We interact with a lot of those companies and and research a lot of what they're doing just because it's kind of it's nerdy. It's kind of cool. And you got to get into it. Right. Because, again, you're going to learn later. You're like you have to adapt and, and try these things out. We've said it a million times. But we're talking about companies like Amper Music, who has been ranked one of the top 10 now as well. AIVA, another one of the top 10. Soundful, Ecrit Music is another big one that I've actually had the chance to play around with a bit. Sounddraw is another big one. Uh, I know you use Boomi uh, a lot as well. And then let's talk about this idea of who knows how to pronounce uh, this one. Moises? I apologize to the team. It's actually something that you brought to my attention yesterday, John. And I have been seeing it all over the place on on Instagram, on uh, Facebook, on TikTok, mm -hmm. everywhere, because a lot of artists are starting to promote it and, and go out to their audiences. The high level idea is that it analyzes a song, right? You, you can actually load up a song and you can drop down any part of the mix with AI. So AI will analyze this entire track with vocals, guitar, drums, everything. And you can actually get rid of the vocals or only have vocals and it'll actually separate all of these out for you. You could change key signatures of popular mm -hmm. songs just with a touch. You could slow it down and it's in the same pitch. So we're seeing this idea of AI music generation tools where you're just creating an entire song. But now mm -hmm. we're starting to see more of those organizations that are bringing the two together as well. So I guess my question for you is, do you think that's a trend? Do you think that's something that they're, they're kind of pulling back from? Remember, we talked about this idea with Brock. Uh, Douglas, we talked about this idea with a few others that at some point it's like too much AI. So maybe people are backpedaling yeah. a bit to combine the two. Uh, but would love to hear your thoughts on like all of these apps. These have all within the last week been in the top 10 ranking of AI music gen. Yeah, well, just in general, I mean, I think it we can have a conversation around the function of these things because Moises, mm -hmm. as you said, uh, again, I, I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. So sorry if you're listening. Um, it does something a little bit different than just generate music. And most of the, the AI music generation, which, you know, we can talk about here in a second. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the social platforms getting into that as well. Why, why do you think they're doing that? But the, the music generation apps, there's a lot of them. It seems like there's a new one coming out every single day um, versus the like Moises, for example, is a, they say that they're a, a musician, uh, an app for musicians. So, somebody who is already playing, maybe they're trying to practice songs, build a repertoire, uh, you play in different keys, you know, whatever. If you're already playing music, I could see how that could be really useful. Maybe you're trying to practice along with just the vocals to a song that you love, or maybe you're trying to change the key so you can sing in a song or just play along with the drums. I, I don't know. There's a lot of different uses for that, but when it comes to actually learning music from, from nothing, uh, I, I think that that's, probably not the category that they fit into this for existing musicians already who want to use something like that. And I'm sure they have some other features as well, but the, the actual music generators. So one interesting thing that I think about a lot with that is commoditization. If they all generate music and they're all pretty good, well, what's the point? 
Like, why do you, there are, you know, a million gas stations out there. Do you really care what brand of gas that you get? Some people do, but for the most part, if you're driving across the country and you need gas, you're just going to go to a gas station. So I'm kind of wondering, you know, with all the different music generation tools, I think they're going to have to differentiate themselves somehow. Like they're going to have some different functionality or some, uh, different problem that they're solving to stay relevant. Otherwise they just get lost in the noise. What do you think about that? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think that it's the new hot thing, right? So mm -hmm. I think that investment dollars are just being poured out to all of these things because you mentioned the word AI or the term AI, mm -hmm. everybody's just jumping on board. Uh, I think yeah. that's one thing. So I think there's, we're seeing saturation for sure. Yeah. Uh, but outside of that, I think it's going to slowly become as you hear about this TikTok thing. Uh, as well. I think it's going to become more about who's backing you than it is what your app does, right? Who has the mm -hmm. most dollars to push you at this point Makes to sense. make it happen? And maybe that's what we're seeing. Maybe we're seeing all of these companies coming out and trying to have the coolest looking things so that they're just ready to be that source of AI music gen for the money makers and, and the investors. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. It is something that every day when I log in now, it's, it's a new one, a new one, a new one. And, you know, some of them do different things every now and then, but for the majority, yeah, it's, and I also am like, I'm one of those adopters that goes in and tries to use something. And if I like it, I, it's very hard to get me to use something new unless it's yep. much different. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm still using Cubase when in a world of people that like Logic and and all the other platforms for DAWs, but I just learned on it and it's the easiest for me and it's what I stick with. So having all these new ones almost allows me to, doesn't allow me, I should say, to actually embrace and try it and learn it and like get comfortable with it. It just seems like they're there, you can try it out and then they they die off and there's another one that you have to learn. But, mm -hmm. you know, I am in my mid thirties. So I'm sure the people that are younger than me are very quick to get to that process. But it is, I mean, there's so many, man. Like you can pull up a list of a thousand different ones at this point and just, you know, throw a dart at the at the screen if you need to, to be like, let's try that one. Let's go <laughs> for it. But yeah, I do like the idea of AI being in the other category where it's analyzing as yeah. well, right? Which is kind of what we're talking about with the one we, we can't name properly, probably Moises. Um, but with that one, I like it because there have been so many times in the years uh, of music production and practice for me that I've always wanted a way to where I could take an original recording and modify it somehow so that I don't have to recreate mm -hmm. everything. You know, I don't have to go in there yeah. and recreate the backing tracks, the drum tracks, everything so that I could do my version of a solo over it or or yeah. just pull the vocals out of something to do a remix or a new version of it. So seeing that is really exciting for me because I'm a musician and I still want to create music outside of that, but it allows me to pull certain elements, but mm -hmm. it's never ending, man. It'll keep going. Yeah. I mean, I think again, with the Moises thing, I think they have, they've, they've hit on something that maybe not that many people are doing. It seems like most of the companies are into music generation. And maybe I would have to assume that the reason for that is because maybe that's the easiest thing to get into. Maybe that's the easiest thing mm. to code to actually produce. Therefore, a lot of people are flowing into that. Uh, but yeah, uh, Moises, again, I'd love to play with their stuff a little more and see what else is capable of. But I mean, even think about like if you, you know, you have your own band, you have your own songs or you're, you know, you're doing your songs by yourself, even just having like a one track uh, and you maybe you don't have access to all the stems, you don't have access to all the tracks, you can't mix it or something. Maybe if you want to change something, like you said, redo a guitar solo, redo some vocals or something like that, well, you can just load it up in the app, pull it out, and there you go. So extremely mm -hmm. useful. I'd love to see what else they can come up with. But I'm really interested to hear your thoughts on if all of these companies are coming out with, with music generation apps, right? AI music gen apps. Why do you think the socials are the, the social media companies are kind of rushing to get in on it as well? What's their plan? You know, I don't know, man. Um, and for those of you that don't know, TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, is is the name of the the actual owners that oversee TikTok. But they have an app called Ripple. What, what is with these names? First of all, R <laughs> Ripple. I don't even, They're know, all taken. I don't even understand, but anyway, it's named ripple. <laughs> they are, they're all taken. Uh, it's geared towards making music, but doing it with the assistance. And I quote assistance of AI. So 
you know, the company shared that it has engineered its own music creation app. It's called Ripple. Currently, it's being tested in an invite only closed beta. So there's already a mm -hmm. beta rolling out with Ripple. And it allows users to create and edit tracks in a manner similar to digital audio workstations, DAWs like Cubase, like I have. Um, now, of course, while DAWs require some prior knowledge or at least a bit of experimentation to get the hang of them, it's build is simpler. So they say Ripple isn't as hard as you getting logic. Don't worry. It's still going to mm -hmm. operate similarly, but it's going to be much easier for you to roll with um, streamlined, essentially. So what it is. And this is the amazing part to me because I've seen other apps that do this and we'll talk about them. A user can literally just hum a melody into the phone microphone with Ripple and it converts it into music. Hmm. So the ideas that are kind of in your head and maybe you can't get them out as well. This is also something they clarified, even if you're not perfect, it will assume what you're trying to do and you can critique it. You can make changes to it as you need to after the recording. But if you have an idea in your head and maybe you yes. are a guitar player and you just don't have the guitar with you and you're like, I got to get this out. I got to get this done. You can put it into this app now just by humming into the microphone uh, on your phone. So by doing that, it converts it into music. It will then contribute its own AI generated instrumentals with that as well. So it has mm -hmm. drum capability, guitars, bass. Uh, the length of the song will match the exact amount of time that the humming is happening. So if you want a full track, you got to hum for a few minutes. In other words, you got to keep going. Uh, but it's only capable right now of generating instrumentals. So leaving vocals up to the creator. So the, if you want to put vocals on it, it has to have human element in the vocals right now. Uh, but it's deemed as a convenient way for creators who don't know how to play instruments to make their own music. So first and foremost, the idea of humming and getting like an audible AI generated instrument, like a MIDI based instrument out of that is amazing to me. First and foremost, I've seen mm -hmm. that in multiple apps where people are able to sing into their doll with a plugin and their voice is a violin at that point. And they could just kind of sing mm -hmm. in pitch and go through, which is amazing to me first. Yeah. Second, the fact that it can compose around me with drums, guitars, bass, everything, and give me this idea just from me doing a simple hum, uh, through TikToks. uh, Bite dance, I should say, through Ripple is insane. So why did they do that? Well, again, we've talked about it a few times. I, I think at the easiest level, we have to remember that they are paying out royalties and and cash to actually use artist music. So when you're on something like TikTok or Instagram or Facebook, you know, you have popular trending sounds. And they pay people out for those, you know, trending sounds as they go up as a creator. You you get cashed out on that. And it's not a ton of money, but that's me talking about me being a creator. So it's not a ton of money as me writing it. But if I think about that times how many millions and the payout that they have to do. So I think the initial concept is that's free money for them. They, they no longer, if they're having people use their AI tool, I'm sure that there are terms and agreements that say they can use uh, the stuff that you've created and it just becomes something that's going in the app. I think the other side of it is that this is where, again, we talked about all the other companies getting into it. Meta last time we talked mm -hmm. about Meta getting into music generation. I think they're all just starting to see that it's a thing. It's a thing. And even if it's not similar to them and what they do right now, they want to be ahead of the curve just in case, because there is a high likelihood that this is going to turn into something much bigger. I mean, we remember when Meta came out and they're like, Metaverse, baby, we're going. Yes. And for six months, seven months, it felt like that's the thing. That's the thing that's going to happen. And then it kind of slowed, right? Because, you know, people weren't maybe ready. This mm -hmm. doesn't feel like it's slowing. The AI music generation, I feel like we've gone over that hurdle of if it were to slow down a bit, it's going to happen now. But mm -hmm. it's not. It's continuing to grow. And I think the fact that we see all these companies being like, we need to invest in this just in case yeah. it's a huge thing. I think at the high level, that's all we're seeing. We're seeing companies start to embrace it, being like, we have a ton of money. So let's figure out how to be a leader in the industry as it grows and make more money off of it and figure that out. But in the immediate, it's free money for them. Like they're saving cash, not paying out creators by having them create on their app and have access to it. But it, it's insane all of that there you go there's my rant there's my ramble for you uh on not only the technology of being able to hum and get something to produce 
But also, I, I think that there is a lot to be said just about them knowing there's a lot of cash in this coming up in the future months and years. Yeah, you know, I would be really interested to talk to the engineers who are coming up with this idea of being able to hum and hear uh, music coming out, because that's something that you and I have talked about quite a lot over the years, actually. Um, and we're moving closer to, you know, I love this idea because, as Einstein said, we're moving out of the information age and we're moving into the imagination age. And to me, this gets one step closer, actually a, a leap closer to getting the music that's in your head out into the what we call into the world, right, where people can actually hear it. And if you think about it now and shoot for the last 60,000 years or, or, or a little more than that, um, I guess forever, honestly, the music that you hear in your head and everybody gets songs stuck in their heads, right? The, the, the yep. amount of people who can take that music in their heads and actually play it through an instrument like a guitar, piano, whatever, is like a tiny, 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 tiny percent of the population. So now just imagine if you start hearing what everybody else is hearing in their head, when they can just hum something and it turns into music, how is that going to affect the ability for people to create music and how much faster it's going to be and how many different ideas there's going to be out there. That's really, really fascinating to me. Um, but also in terms of, you know, the social media companies getting into this, clearly we can't, we can't possibly see all of their plans and we can't possibly see what they see. But I think you're right. Part of it is just ownership. They want to figure out a way that they can own this new category, this new thing that's happening or all of this flow is happening into this new area. How can we just capture that? How can we own it? How can we, we be the ones, you know, rather than even leading it and having a product in the space, I think a lot of it is about ownership. Yeah. Yeah. I'd agree with that. And I think that also you have the other side of like that, the, that idea of getting the music out of your head and humming it, which is, is it really what you were having in your head though? Right. Right. At what point, is it not? So I could be humming something kind of incorrectly or or not mm -hmm. getting it out. And the fact that there's AI generated instrumentation around me kind of completely changes that. You know, you and I totally. both are are kind of music nerds in the way that we understand theory and everything. So it's just like taking a simple melody and being like, let me do this melody, but knowing mm -hmm. that the chords underneath are really what make it what it is. So it's like, what what if it completely changes the thought? And it's not really what you had in your head, but you like it more. And it's, yeah. it starts to think for you instead of you having it in your head, getting it out. And then it's thinking for you on something to make it better. So it's it's a fine line. I don't know. I could see how people would be like, I'm scared of it. Uh, I could see how people are like, I love it because I don't have to think. I don't know. I could just I could just do it and I could be done. I think it's the same thing as playing with a good band. You you play with a good band. Let's say you're all standing around and you all have instruments and you know you and I are guitar players. So maybe we have this idea for a riff. Like we, have, we hear this thing in our head. We're trying to play it on our guitar. And we have this little idea. And the rest of the band, you know, they have their own personality. They have their own brain. They interpret what you're playing in a different way than you do. So they start playing something on top of it. And it, if it's a good band with good chemistry, it, it always becomes something way better than you would imagine what it is in the first place. I think this is the same thing, just done by a computer. Um, in yeah. addition to that, yeah, it, it's really fascinating. But in, in addition to that, I think, you know, humming requires some skill to hum and pitch, right? You still have to have some vocal skill to be able to do that. So this could potentially, I mean, we have the idea of auto tune, which has been around for a long or, you know, decently long time at this point. But I think that this could allow people who, uh, maybe can hear the music in their head, but they can't, uh, they don't have the, the vocal, um, infrastructure is the wrong word. There's a, there's a word I'm looking for, but they don't have the ability basically at the current moment to be able to hum the right thing in the right pitch. I think this could potentially catch on to what they're trying to do and help them, uh, get that idea out there. Yeah. Yeah. And there are apps out there. I I'm on sure of the name of the one I'm thinking of. Once I find it, I'll put it in the show notes. But there are like the one I mentioned where it turns your voice into like a violin or, yeah. or strings. Um, it actually has a little meter on it. So you select what key you want to mm. be singing in and it will actually highlight if you're in pitch or if you're out of pitch so that you can raise your, your tone up or go down uh, so that you're at least training. So it's kind of like a two step thing. You're, you're doing this cool AI thing with with MIDI tools in your DAW, but also you're doing vocal training in a way, right? It's starting to teach you how to 
critique your voice and how to change your voice, which mm -hmm. could be a really good idea to bring in as well. But let's be honest, they're probably just going to lean on auto tune functionality uh, at some point. They're going to be like, do you want it in a minor scale or like a major scale? What do you want? Uh, just just tell us and we'll figure it out from there. And you could probably at this point, we'll have to dig into Ripple and, and play around with it to see. But at this point, you could probably be changing it in real time. I imagine mm -hmm. that as you're recording, you can you can hit a few buttons and you're in a different key, uh, everything. So it's it's amazing I, as it a musician that used to sit with no no instruments, well, with instruments and no Internet uh, in in the computer room and record by myself for eight hours. The fact that we have come that far and I'm old, but again, I'm not that old. All right. So like in 20 years. We have come from me just sitting down, plugged into dial up Internet, not having to be connected to it because my mother needed to use the phone uh, to this moment of picking up our phones that are in our pocket every day and humming into them just to get an idea down. And it's an entire song. It's yeah. wild and amazing to me. It's really wonderful. But we will, as we always do in the show notes, have links for all of the actual platforms that we mentioned. Also, those of you on the YouTubes, I know a lot of you like to comment and engage. So we're interested. What are you using? What are you currently testing out in terms of AI music generation and tools? We're going to be experimenting with a lot of them and bringing uh, the actual examples to the table here in the next coming mm -hmm. episodes. Uh, we actually plan on doing an overview with sharing and showing you all of the tools and kind of doing a live walkthrough as well here soon. So tell us which ones we should do that with. That's a big one. And if you're not following and subscribe, make sure you do that. I, I always have to say that and that you need to click the alerts so that you know when, when our faces are on the interwebs all the time. All right. So make sure you do that. But John, closing thoughts from you on all of these advancements on apps that we're seeing, social networks that we're seeing, highly focused on AI music. This is something actually that we haven't talked about directly yet, but if you just zoom out and you, I know we're talking specifically about these apps right now, but there has been, I think because of the uh, new capabilities that are available with this whole AI revolution, this whole AI explosion that's been happening over the last, what, few hours, um, it 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 seems to be somehow highlighting music and the music industry and creating music more the mainstream who isn't generally focused on music as much it seems to be um that again meta TikTok, all of those co bigger companies where music generally isn't the conversation there are people on the platforms having conversations about music but it seems like industries as a whole are kind of making more of a shift towards sounds and music and what's possible, et cetera. So that's really interesting um, for, for me to see. And I'm, I'm, I, I love to see how it unfolds. But yeah, I would say that that's my biggest takeaway from this really is that there's a lot of focus on this. So I'm really curious to see how it all unfolds. Yeah. Yeah. And I agree. And I think that you've said it before, you know, the massive majority of people out there all want to create mm -hmm. music. Uh, it's just that idea that terrifies them of picking up the guitar or another instrument and having yeah. to physically learn it. It's it's the hardest part of everything. I still struggle with it. I've been playing for 85 years now and I still struggle with the <laughs> instruments uh, a lot to where I want to do something that I have in here and it takes weeks of practice to be able to nail it instead yeah. of the majority of people out there that are like, man, I really wish I could do this cool thing where I write this idea in my head and it's done in 10 minutes. Yeah. So I think it's making it um, more possible for everybody to do that, make their dream of writing something, even if it's mm. just them being like, I wish I could write one song. That'd be fun. And just yeah. doing one song and being like, that was fun. I'm satisfied. Like at least they got the opportunity to do a song. They didn't have to learn this thing for years. So mm -hmm. it's making it way more accessible, I think is, is kind of what I'm getting at. And it's cool. As a musician that even studied all the stuff I did and worked as hard as I did, it's all I want to see is people really embrace music. I don't mm -hmm. care what level. I don't care if you're you know Bach or if you are somebody that has never picked up an instrument and has no idea what one looks like, but wants to be able to record a three-minute song just for the heck of it. Like, as long as that's happening, I'm happy. Uh, we're still keeping music alive in that way, which is a really cool thing to do. And we're spreading it even more than we ever did before. So very interesting stuff. So 
thank you for being here, my friend. And again, check the description uh, because we'll link all of this stuff for you to dig into and test out as well. Leave comments, questions, uh, style tips because I need them and everything else that you can think of. Know that we appreciate you all and we will talk to you next time on the Future of Music podcast. See ya.